welcome back everybody to a nerdcore podcast uh interview today we have the director and producer for i am a short film uh that's been on many film festivals and uh they reached out to us to do this uh interview uh i think i believe a couple days after we finished our tennessee run our our press run uh so it was great to hear that we were still able to do an interview even though the kind of just uh press release for that festival specifically was over with um but overall i mean i really much appreciate your time and coming on here um uh so today we have jerry hoffman uh who is the director for the film and stella flicker who is the producer um how are you guys Good. We're thanks. Great. Thanks for having thanks. us. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I really much appreciate uh, the time. Um, so I know you guys have a uh, another interview or uh, whatnot. So I will keep this short. Um, like I was saying, it was only five quick questions. Uh, and uh, so I am follows the story of a woman who finds a android in the forest, brings it home, and basically just fixes it and stuff unties and it goes fairly crazy real quick <laughs> um but for this film i was kind of interested in the tone because uh there are uh i studied philosophy and there are certain things that uh, i took course and practiced my papers on which was kind of um what makes cybernetics or robots uh be classified as entities or at what point do we classify them as living beings uh compared to humans right and i, I before i assumed the the role of the film i kind of wanted to ask what was the inspiration behind it because i did get that sense but i mean you guys may just have enjoyed the story of <laughs> of uh, this film so <laughs> what was the inspiration was behind it that was your topic, so you studied this. So you the so expert. it wasn't specifically, <laughs> but it was a a side tone. Like some of the classes that I took did deal with that. Wow! Yeah. So you're the professional. We're just gonna embarrass ourselves now. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I, I, it was very difficult classes, but I did enjoy them. And so at least I have some aspects of it, but I'm no professional. Well, we we got into it because we were so interested in it. We didn't study anything, but we had mm. did a lot of research, and we're both okay. very interested in um, artificial intelligence in general. So oh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I very much got that. I know in the email it said that it was a very uh, interested topic in between like robotics and and moralities, and I believe. Um, but yeah, no, it, okay. So it's good to know that it wasn't just <laughs> me assuming this more deep analysis than it actually is. Um, but uh, I mean, so the, the, the... the connection between humans and androids, humans and robots, so it's a very long uh, classic in science fiction novels and films. And <laughs> yes. Of course, there are so many levels of, of philosophical questions of what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to dream? What does that mean to be a human being and to feel? And yeah. th those questions were very much purposely there. I, I was like, who created That's you? Cool. What's your purpose? And I, and I love that because then I just looked at myself and then I, I don't know if they're asking myself or the main, <laughs> one of the main characters, <laughs> <laughs> but I did thoroughly enjoy those questions. Um, Probably for the more particular um point of view with your with your studies it's amazing. <laughs> definitely but i mean I, I have to look at it from my audience standpoint right i can't just go <laughs> um so for my second question uh i know it is very much implied that there are going to be very much uh open-ended questions on this film and about characters and like what's the actual story behind them um and it's it's clear like i, I was left wanting kind of to continue this uh, a little bit more um, but for a bigger question, it would be, are you guys planning to go off into a more bigger aspect or at least create a, a short or two more, just giving a little more insight on the story of this world? Yeah, I mean, I could totally think about it and would love mm -hmm. that. But at the moment, we're just still in the in the um, festival road with this movie. And so it's... Got you. it's it's more about um, how 
it's so interesting how different people might perceive this particular film and we try to give a lot of clues but still leave it open on certain points of what happened before the story what happens after the story what is real and what is not what is a dream and and this um, inter interconnection and i think this this is um kind of so universal that you could that you could end in the whole series about it yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah, even though it is a festival circuit, it, it's really entertaining and I, it was lovely seeing it. And I, I wouldn't mind seeing this on an HBO series or just like an actual <laughs> film series. Okay, because we go. It was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, HBO, if you're listening, uh, give this guys a, a good season of uh, this uh film story because uh, we could name it i am or uh, who knows maybe you guys want to change it in the future um but i do know this is your thesis work is that correct or a yeah. thesis yes. film that you were doing mm -hmm. uh, did, did you guys have any restrictions with that uh, um i know in some cases you guys uh may have uh i wouldn't say rules but just uh the need for specifics based on either sponsors or stuff like that um, uh, but that's going based off of what I do here in my hometown of Houston. Um, but did you guys have any restrictions or any obligations to have certain things or was it just a free for all for your creativity to just run uh, wild? Well, from our film school, there's, there's usually some kind of restriction of definitely. And the, the scripts are being checked to say the least. Um, yes. but in this case, the pandemic was kind of our gift because we had to come up with a whole new story. We all, all even uh, of a school principals and stuff, they didn't know, are we going to be able to shoot? Uh, and w how much can we do? How many days can we do? How many actors can we have? And so yes. at in this point, we, we came up with a script or our author wrote the script and, um, there was no restriction at all, I believe. Or did no. I forget something? No, I mean, it's a two years program. We do three movies and only the first one has like kind of artistic uh, limitations, which has to be black and white oh, okay. and has to be without um, spoken word. And this is where we connected yeah. with Stella and I already worked together with the same DP and author and all fell in love with us. And so mm -hmm. um, now with the thesis movie, I think um, there were no, I mean, there's some unspoken um, I feel like I, I studied in Los Angeles and, and, and yeah. in Hamburg and I feel like every film school has their unspoken or spoken laws of yes. what is uh, what kind of dramaturgy, what kind of stories can you do? You cannot, um, yeah, you, you have to be in this realm. I think we cannot um, uh, have smoking characters. It's, oh, it's not, yeah. Not, I yeah, think that's even German TV stuff. I mean, those are just kind of rules you have to follow. Uh, okay. The well, one rule was in the beginning was um, it had to be 20 minutes long max. And then we yeah. are we were allowed to be longer and to go to 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes. Okay. So that was that was one rule, for example. Yeah. But we should so, right after the peak of the pandemic. So, of course, there were like societal also like bigger than yeah. the school restrictions of how much time can the actresses touch each other can they eat something mm. yeah, the hygiene master does everyone have to have masks so, yes. so all of these um all of these play into it yeah and okay so course, it was more so just the normal restrictions we all know know <laughs> yeah. now yeah you know the everyday one <laughs> of course we, we, yeah the restrictions that a lot of people should follow <laughs> but yeah, yeah. sadly over here in the u.s that's not the case for a lot um but so going off a uh, the more typical like uh, set questions or production questions, I kind of wanted to ask about your guys' direction or Jerry, since you were the director um, for, I believe, the actress uh, who played Ella was the android, correct? That's yes. right. Eva okay. Played by Melody Wakiwamina. Mel yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't pronounce the name, so I was hesitant on saying it just not to butcher it but um what was your style or what was your kind of choice of of direction for her to just act like an android the speech pattern and all that the the motion of body um did you have a specific thing like uh check out this uh film of how the people move and then we can do that or is it more just freeballing it from your own uh knowledge 
I mean, robots and androids in film are nothing new, and I try to um, I try to not be inflicted too much of other other um, works of other artists. Yes. So we, that Stella watched so much of the backs of real humans and did a lot of mm -hmm. research that we tried to see of how how did others um, do it. I'm an yes. actor myself for a decade, so I'm I'm very glad coming from acting and working with Melody on on. Um, how does she talk? How does she walk? We had this. We listened to Siri and Alexa and all of these mm -hmm. voice recognition algorithms that we have today because it's a very um, near German future. So it's very connected to to the now, what we're using now already, and yeah. how can we develop like a yeah, a, like kind of a development. And of course, this um, black female body is probably meeting the first woman and the first black person in her life and trying to copy her and how is she observing and how much is she becoming mm -hmm. Noe and also becoming a human or or not and so Melody was really amazing in doing this transition yeah definitely there there were scenes where I couldn't tell if it was a replacement body like uh from the stiffness and movement or if it was actually the actress if it was melody doing all the, her parts um it was just surprising to see it it, it very much gave off that uh i guess uh human like but there's still something off of it uh with the whole un what's underneath kind of situation like the, the robotics part um but yeah no i mean so it's cool to see that you kind of had liberty and try not to put too much based on the other stuff that's out there um so uh final question since i i couldn't think of uh too many questions that wouldn't get too complicated um <laughs> but uh you study the, philosophy you can come up with a real complex question i'm sure give us one <laughs> complex sometimes question <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i i've tried but it, when i go and speak it out it, it never comes out right and i just use my guess which is not I good what you shouldn't want to do um <laughs> But for the final scene or the final couple minutes, not the actual scene, um, you guys uh, in the film were doing like this dance sequence. And I kind of wanted to ask about the set um, because, uh, as you mentioned, now that I know you guys were doing like peak COVID and a bit after, um, did you guys use uh, a set? for the environment of the i i don't even know what to call it a castle or just a, a random uh lay or small pool area or fountain uh where they dance or was it like an actual on location site that you guys scouted out and went to this is a great question i i, I just I, i just get an, an immediate memory of um, Lena Krause, our DOP, and Jerry went to the big studio in Hamburg because we mm -hmm. over uh, we we were looking for a special set for this dancing scene, gotcha. and then they came back. I, I wasn't there; I couldn't come with them. And then they came back and they said, "We found this amazing location. It's filled with water and it's huge." <laughs> and I was like, "What? How should we do this?" And it wasn't even a real film set; it was just the behind the behind the film sets uh, I don't know it was oh. crazy I thought I was being I don't know I thought <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to shoot it on the first day even oh, okay. uh, it was it was an adventure we, I don't know but Jerry saw it and then he was in love you have to tell your side of the story I just my I side of the story was like what should we do yeah. <laughs> why yes. I was so glad to have Stella on the set as a producer. She did an amazing <laughs> job. It's not only a pandemic, but then the DP and the director come up with shooting in water, <laughs> which is like <laughs> insurance-wise and everything-wise. And so I'm I'm really glad at the end that we should convince her um, that, that this is the most... Um, yeah, we always knew there should be a special and, and uh, like... Um, an undefined world where you don't know where it is, but it is more like the subconscious of her. And so we were looking mm -hmm. for that. But of course, we are student production. We really limited in budget money, yes. all the locations and stuff. So we had to um, look for the right place. And then, yeah, it was right. That's my part of the story. We saw it. We loved it. And at the end, <laughs> found out, and you took I it. Think, um, it good. definitely fit the story, yes. especially just the ambiance of it feeling otherworldly like uh, uh what a fantasy would be um because it was just so focused in that one area with the water and then mm -hmm. you could just see a tiny bit of the background with the entrance or a, a tunnel area and then some stairs and then that was it but it, it seems so like there was nothing rendered in outside of what was on frame 
kind of situation, which I, I, I love for the, the end scene. And after that is where I was just like, I wanted more. I, I checked the time. I was like, uh, this, this, I thought we had a, at least a couple more minutes just to give me a little glimpse more, but mm -hmm. uh, apparently not, <laughs> but no, no hard feelings on that. Um, but I, I, yeah, that was all the questions I had. I mean, uh, sadly it was a very, uh, to the point, uh, questions for me on this one, because, uh, for the most part, aside from the obvious, uh, we left it open-ended, uh, scenes, uh, there was very much, I could tell what you guys were trying to, to put out there and to produce and what kind of the questions were out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank you so much again for coming. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share about the film or if uh, if it's uh, it'll be out there soon or like for the public to see or any other festival they may be able to check it out at? Well, just thank you for um, uh, listening to the questions and not asking for answers, which is great because, yeah, <laughs> this is what the movie kind of does. It just asks mm -hmm. questions and there, well, there aren't the answers to them. So thank you. And um, yeah, the movie is still going around on festivals. I don't, there's uh, the next one. I'm not even sure at the moment. I would have to check. I, but there is a link, um, not public yet, but it will be hopefully at some, at some point. But as long as we're still going from festival Industry. to festival, unfortunately, it's not. Um, it will only be sometimes able to stream on the festivals. Well, thanks God, to the God. pandemic, we have that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which but, is a pity. Okay. I mean, there Which was something that we can connect to the audience worldwide mm -hmm. but the great thing is that it's easier now for people all over the world when there's a festival to actually watch it they don't have to travel yeah. to to run to houston where yeah, you are german or something <laughs> I, uh, yeah i think there's i don't know what's the next festival but people are i know it's it's there are a few in germany at the moment it's dusseldorf it's Göttingen. Oh, they're all okay. before christmas so there are some true, um true. but international ones i think they have geo blocking so you can't watch it outside to this i'm not sure yeah. but yeah oh, that's that's crazy they really want you to secure your thesis right <laughs> yeah 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 short short film, film school very secure, that's one of the restrictions <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the restrictions <laughs> oh thank you again uh do you guys want to uh provide social medias or any other film that you may have i know you guys created ma which is behind jerry uh, which I was interested to see because it, it was in the the um, description of this short film or the email that I got sent. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to see it by comparing it to... I think to this one's other. online at the moment, but we'll, we it? can... Okay, cool. call it, in Germany, at least. I think it's still online for a few weeks. But um, yeah, we can send you the details. Yeah, definitely. Uh, sure. I would appreciate that. So we can just uh, plug up your stuff. And then, yeah, I mean... That was basically it. Thank you so much again for joining us and uh, allowing our audience to kind of get a feel for you guys as the director and producer. And um, definitely, I hope whenever it comes out, <laughs> if it comes out to the public, if security allows for that clearance, um, <laughs> I would uh, suggest everyone to go watch this film. I am a great piece of work. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, can't say this enough. Thank you for coming on. It, it's, I'm very much appreciative of anyone that comes on. Um, so uh, this has been a Nerdcore interview, and I will catch everyone on the next one. Peace.